Well, we're now joined by Keith Wilson, who is a lawyer who also represents members of the convoy protests. Mr. Wilson, thank you for joining us again. Thank you for having me. So you are in Calgary right now, and uh, as you said to me earlier, you are there uh, with some of the protesters, among them Tamara Leach. Uh, I'm wondering what the reaction is from you and from the people you represent. Well, I was in another meeting when the report initially came out, so they had a chance to digest it. And then when I came into the hotel room that I'm in right now, uh, the leaders were all around. And uh, there was this tremendous, painful look of, of sorrow and, and loss on their face, very similar to what you know we experience when, when we have a, a loss of a loved one. And, and what they explained to me is uh, that they feel this is a dark day for our country. It's a dark day because we've always been proud of our respect for rights and freedoms, uh, for human rights, uh, for dialogue, political dissent. And uh, this decision from Mr. Rillo says that the threshold is of what occurred in Ottawa is enough to bring in the Emergencies Act and take uh, rights from people to freeze bank accounts, personal business bank accounts. So uh, they're quite concerned that that we've taken a, a turn to more of an authoritarian country as opposed to the true North Strong and Free. You know, I want to break uh, that up a little bit and, and begin with the fact that, you know, when you go through this report, Justice Rouleau uh, does say that there there were many peaceful protesters a, a part of the, the movement. In fact, he says that the government, all governments should have done a better job of acknowledging that the majority of people were just exercising their fundamental and democratic rights and should have uh, been more clear uh, drawing a line of distinction between peaceful protesters and those who are not. Is that not at least encouraging to you? Well, yes, but it still signals that, you know, in the past, remember, we've only used this type of power where we s suspend civil liberties, where we allow the government to seize property, in this case, bank accounts and other things, uh, without the due process of law, when we've been in an acute ex existential situation like World War I, World War II, and the FLQ crisis. So we've completely established a new bar and, and, and not only a new bar, but new powers, because back then, you know, we didn't have digital banking and everybody had cash and so on. So, um, no, it doesn't give comfort. Um, and, and, you know, I think there's imp international implications to this. I think this decision today, respectfully, uh, tarnishes Canadians, Canada's image as, 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 as a country that in the past has been this hallmark, this fresh air of freedom and respect for individuals and, and, and diversity and diversity of views and dialogue. So uh, I, don't, I, I take no comfort in, in any aspect of the report to be candid with you. Uh, Justice Rouleau also uh, makes a distinction between peaceful protesters and what he says was happening on Parliament Hill again acknowledging that many people had come out to, to, be, to be peaceful but there were other elements uh, amongst the protesters and he, he basically says that they were, he doesn't accept the fact that the whole protest was a peaceful action. Well then he's redefining the English language because what we know is the crime statistics were down. We know that there was, um, uh, there was no bombings, there was no fires, there was no windows broken. Um, there was an absence of criminality, there was an absence of violence. That was the sworn testimony from the OPP, from the RCMP, from the Ottawa City Police, from CSIS and so on. So, see, that's what's concerning here, is that, 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 that we, we're, we're using new terms to define violence. It wasn't actual violence, it was felt or perceived violence. So, I'm not suggesting, nor any of my clients, that, that, that it would have been unreasonable for the government to take steps. And we've all, I was always baffled why they didn't use some of their existing powers early. I was always baffled as to why no one applied for an injunction to have them leave. We had an injunction against horns and we had an injunction against something else, but nobody ever applied, no government authority ever applied for an injunction to have them leave. I was always baffled by that and I testified to that during the inquiry. So I think it comes back to the high level point that uh, we can get into the minutiae on these various points, but at the end of the day, the, the nature of civil disobedience that we saw has now been deemed to be the triggering, sufficient to trigger these powers that have only been triggered in the past in world war existential situations of national security. 
And I think it's a chilling effect. It fundamentally changes uh, the ability of not just this government, of any other government. That's what I think we've got to be careful about. Some, you know, we're all on teams, right? You're either conservative or liberal or left or right. Any government can use these powers now in a way that was not constrained prior to today. 2020 hindsight, uh, I'm wondering, Mr. Wilson, would you have advised for things to be done differently than they were uh, from the protesters? Uh, no, I, I've reflected on that many times. Um, uh, as you can imagine, there was a very challenging environment. There was a lot of people with different views. Uh, my job, among other things, was to try and achieve uh, Tamara's wishes, which was to always keep uh, the protest peaceful, uh, always keep um, uh, uh, it, it as respectful as possible to make sure there was no violence, no vandalism, uh, those sorts of things. There was no no, uh, no burning of churches or buildings uh, or anything like that. Um, uh, it was uh, uh, it was these people had the right to have representation as they exercised their charter right of protests and lawful assembly. At no time, each of the police officials that we walked through, and I think it was even Lamenti as well, you know, were any of the legal triggers met to declare this an unlawful assembly, even though everybody uses this phrase unlawful assembly, and they all agreed they weren't. They didn't meet the requirements. The Riot Act wasn't read under the criminal code. I could go on. So um, all in all, I think what should have happened was the someone in the federal government should have said, hey, let's sit down and talk to these people. Let's hear them out. They didn't have to agree with the protesters. But um, the Canadian way to do things is have a, a civil discourse, see where we can agree, see where we can agree to uh, on a way of a dialogue to move forward to resolve grievances and um, now you know as a government you don't have to work that hard anymore you can ignore those who disagree with you and uh, if they get uh, too boisterous and they start protesting well now you can seize their bank accounts and, and freeze their business accounts as well and I think that's what's so dangerous about what happened today. So, so how do you answer then? In the Rouleau report, uh, the justice pointing mm -hmm. out to the fact that he didn't think there there would have been opportunity to negotiate with anyone because the, the protest the protest itself was so decentralized. Well, I mean, I've addressed this many times, including in my testimony. The proof is in the pudding, and what I mean by that is uh, Tamara Leach and the board and the other road captains had negotiated over a number of days, and I was involved in that with the mayor and uh, uh, leading into the weekend before the invocation. And on the Monday morning, the same day, the same afternoon, February 14th, that the Emergencies Act was invoked, uh, they had shown their ability to clear out a number of city blocks, over 100 protest vehicles moved, 23 up to Wellington, the rest out to the base camps, and some of them, people went home. So I think they demonstrated their ability to have moral suasion and uh, get the cooperation of the protesters. The only reason that was stopped was because the police put a stop to it, and that was the testimony under oath at the inquiry. So I think, um, and you know, and it worked. It, the civil discussion worked at Windsor. It worked at Coots. That's why those borders were opened over the weekend. But there was this absolute adamance on part of the federal government to have no dialogue whatsoever, even though they had my cell number. Even though they knew they could reach out to the mayor, they had my email address, they had Tamara's email address, they had her phone number. So uh, it's disappointing. Uh, I, I hope that, you know, we, we, we've got it. Canadians need to decide whether they think this was a good thing and they need to voice their, their, their views to their elected officials and political parties need to decide what their position is. Um, because if enough Canadians say, no, I, I don't think this is right, what's happened here and it's not a reflective of my Canadian values, then a future government can uh, amend the Emergencies Act to put in truly stringent thresholds so that it can't be used to simply quell uh, protests and uh, lawful dissent. Keith Wilson, thank you for the time today. Thank you very much.